Welcome to the Master's Certificate in Technical Analysis. This is Module 11 and my name is Stu Wilson. This module is concerned with money management and the use of computers in your trading. We'll do first with money management. Uh, money management basically means how you allocate your trading capital and that's how you use your money so that you can make adequate profits but if you have losses you don't wipe away, they don't wipe you out. The secret to that is obviously position sizing. This just means how much money you put into any particular trade and how you analyze that trade to see how much money you can fit in there. Part of the calculation is the reward, reward versus the risk. Now this is a calculation that you have to do from looking at the charts of the stock that you're interested in. A reward is how much you think you're going to be able to make, where you think the stock would go up to, how much you think it's going to go up to, and, what, and that's your, and what's your target. You, you, you may get a, a target, say, if you have a triangular formulation, formation. Remember we said that the target was as far above the breakout line as the size of the base of the triangle. So you can have a fair idea of what your target is there. And risk, the risk of loss, for losses, you would look at where uh, is the point where you're going to pull the plug and cut losses and close the position. Now this may very well be the, if the trade goes down to a support, and if it's a reversal, you may just say that that's the value that I would cash in and curl up in bed. And you can also look at the reward. You look at the risk, and generally speaking, unless the reward is three times what the risk is, we don't want to trade that trade. There's no way where you would want to take a trade where the reward is about the same as the risk. Some traders do take trades where the reward is twice the risk, twice the risk but that's generally not recommended. The more potential a reward you have, the best your chance of profiting. Don't forget that even the best of traders may only do 70% well in trades. Some people say that only half the trades be profitable trades and the, and the only way you get a profit from faults like that is to make sure that your wins are bigger than your losses and that's the root cause to assess risk. Another important point for money management is that your trading capital is, is your trading capital only that another important point for money management is is that is your trading capital only that you can trade with your trading capital does not include your savings for a new car next year your trading capital does not include the college fund for your kids your trading capital can't include scared money it can't include money that you're too emotionally attached to because then you will not think clearly it's going to be hard enough to deal with those emotions anyway because money is involved and if it's money that's vital to you like your rent check for next month there's no way you're going to be able to think clearly and trade special properly so so this is funny money this is money you've saved and you put aside and say now I've earned enough money now I'm going to learn to trade so that's the overall idea of money management now how do we do this? We have some general guidelines and you're welcome to if you think you know better you can change these guidelines but for a suitable start I'd recommend we really follow what these guidelines are. They're heavily approved proven over the years and if you go outside them you may find that you'll get trapped. So the general guidelines are uh, the general guideline, this, and this is quite a vague one really, all it says is that you shouldn't spend more than 25 percent of your account on mark on any market sector. Market sector ca sectors can catapult and several stocks in that sector will follow each other down so you don't want to be totally committed into a market sector such as retail or energy. So a rough guide don't put more than a quarter or 25% into, uh, into one uh, into a, a, a market sector. The next guideline is that you don't want to put more than 10% of your trading capital into any one particular stock. Again, you want to catch the downfall in this. If the stock plummets, you're going to be risking too much. So you have the guideline, but you have, but having got that guideline, we then look further into it and we say we don't want to lose more than 2% of our whole trading account on any particular trade. Now, when you first hear that, you may say that that's ridiculous. 
what I'm going what am I going to do so that I don't have more than 2% loss is actually it's a loss on the trade it's looking at that risk level on the trade and seeing how many clients how many pennies and if it's below the price I'm buying it at so how many clients how many cents will I lose if I quit where I figured out that I need to quit and will I lose in the trade so actually that may not be limiting factor in how much you'll put in the trade it's actually the 10% that may be a limiting factor into how much you put into a trade but you're looking to lose no more than 2% on any particular bad trade and just one for margin products like futures or anything that would cause a broker to ask you for more money if it was going the wrong way as a general guideline don't put more than half of your trading capital into that choice if your trade if, if in your trade and obviously some of the other capital may be covered in the margin so you're going to keep some in reserve for that psychology is a big issue some people think it's the biggest issue in trading until you trade live with money you don't really appreciate how hard it is to determine and to have to get out of a losing position first question in, in psychology is when do you quit do you watch for the stock to come down to the level that you knew you would get out at or say to yourself it was a good pick it's going to go back up we've all done it it goes down below the level you say you say it's trash but you sh could quite you could quit that trade and move to close that position in order to just accept the loss but then let's just wait for another day I think it's going to turn around they're going down a bit more but maybe I just want it to come back up to where I was going to close the trade originally I just want to get it to get back up I don't want to lose more money than that and another day later it goes down some more gets harder and further down it goes it's really not hard to get out of the trade at that at that level you planned but you should consider how much harder it is to go out if you've lost twice as uh, twice as much because you've waited and procrastinated so that's the psychological side of it quitting is sort of failing and that's not the attitude that you can have in trading you quit out of a position to cut your losses and not because you failed the market is bigger than you no one knows just where it is going and it's not a failure to quit at any position if the reasons that you're in that position are wrong if it's proved you wrong and you're going down instead of up that's not failing it's a very difficult psychology to get over that barrier thinking that it's failure but you have to do that otherwise your trading can be no can be no long above all when you're trading you're not trying to make a profit you may think you do but above all you're not trying to make a profit you're trying to preserve your capital that's the only attitude that will pull you through when you trade you preserve your capital you're glad to get out of that losing position quickly before you lose any more because you're trying to preserve your capital and if you trade sensibly and trade only correct trades then you'll find you'll make, you'll make a profit but if you concentrate that you're going to make a profit then you're going to quite possibly fail at trading so remember that the primary aim of trading is to preserve capital so let's run through these primary aspects of psychology when you're losing people tend to take on more risk by leaving the trade in place when you ha what you have to do is turn that on its head especially as traders you should avoid risks by cutting out quickly closing your position and avoid the risk and the opposite when you're running when you're in a running trade people tend to avoid any more risk and close out positions and say ha I made a profit off of those shares but they could have made more you don't avoid risk you want to welcome risk when you're winning not a vi not an obviously unwise risk but you welcome the risk you welcome the chance that the price is going up even further you cut your losses and you hope for the winners run so it's counterintuitive lots of traders do it but it's the key to successful trading and the other aspect that comes into psychology obviously is what happened before if you've had many losing trades you may be feeling really down if you have one with wings you're like you're like yeah I'm gonna close that and feel good today and I made money today no you don't not unless it's time to quit you don't 
If you have a succession of wins, you may think, ah, really, I understand this trading deal, I can do this, and you may be tempted to put more money up. These are all psychological factors you don't want to, to let deviate you from your plan, and if you do take the market, it will catch you up market will play games with you and you'll do something you'll take a chance it'll turn up and you'll think yeah I guess I do know what I'm doing here but just when you put most of your money in your your triumph the market will just turn on you and you will just fail so that's the psychology of it psychology as it as it says is really an extremely important part You'll face it when you do live trading with money, but then you'll really have to fully understand what you really have to conquer your fears, and you really have to conquer your greed. Fear and greed are often cited as the big emotions that will affect your trading. Fear of losing, fear of what people will think if you didn't make money this week. Greed is the other one that affects you. Fear and greed are the strong emotions, and that's why you have to be calm, and that's why the money you're trading with you shouldn't have any attachment to. It should not be your college fund or your new car. It's got to be something you can trade with dispassionately and do the right thing rather than doing the thing that emotions would compel. Now position sizing, this is money management. How much, you, how much do you put into a trade? Do you identify in your trade you think there's a trend that's going up or you think there's going to be a breakout? So how much will you put in that? You want to invest all out no no you've been through the numbers you're going to put a lot less than that the first thing you should do is you should check the market sector do you have any other shares in that sector and one that's been showing good trends and therefore you've got some more positions in that sector you check what you've got in there already work out 25 percent of your account as it sits right now with the pulse pluses and minus and then you see how much more capital do we have to put into another share in that market sector. Next thing you do is you know how much your account's worth. Check how much 10% of that is. You're not going to put in more than that into this particular opportunity. Then you check feared losses on your investment. How much is it going to go down before it breaks through a support? You get into the point where you say, you know what, it's fair, I'm going to have to close my position so you check that out and that comes out of your technical analysis and then finally the number of shares is two percent of the account divided by loss per share so you take two percent of your account say you've got a fifty thousand dollar account two percent would be a thousand dollars and you divide that by the loss per share that you're prepared to see before you liquidate your position and call it a failure which may be 50 cents a share depending on whatever it is. So the most you can have is uh, 2,000 shares, 1,000 divided by 0 0.5 losses per share, which is 2,000 shares. But then you go back and say, what is the minimum for the above? Can you buy 2,000 shares for 10% of your account, or can you only get 1,500 shares, for which case you only need trade in 1,500 shares, and that will make sure that the averaging of the losses and the wins that you're going to get you don't deplete your account too much you've seen the statistics you lose 50 percent of your account say on five trades where you lose 10 percent then you've got to double your account even to get back to where you started you're going to have to make a hundred percent you cannot take a too big an amount out of your account for your losses to recover it easily I mentioned on position sizing maybe trading a breakout. I'll go into that into more detail in the text and of course main discussion of that comes in the next module which is about forming a trading plan but just what it says is the text in the text is that you may trade breakouts. You may look at channel lines or horizontal supply and resistance lines and say the shares have been traded in and then you look for a breakout on those and then you look to get in the trade. And then the other thing is you're going to do is establish an uptrend. You have a, you will have a retracement, which may only be a third or maybe a bit more, but you'll watch as shares come down, and you'll quickly jump onto those as it turns back to resume its uptrend. Now, don't forget that for all this, your prime direction is to reserve your preserve your capital, not make money. Your primary direction is to preserve your capital. Can't say that too many times. 
Now we get to the types of orders. I'll briefly run through these. Again, the details are in the text and they're fairly straightforward. A market order, that's just you asking the broker to go into the market. Say a hundred shares of this and you'll see what price you can get into. In my experience, when you place orders like this, the broker tries hard to improve in the number that you've seen, and sometimes he can. I've had brokers come back where the number's been better, and I was pleasantly surprised. When, when the deal's in your broker's hands and you say to him five shares, you don't know exactly what you're going to get, probably close to what you're saying on the screen, but there's no guarantee if it's available on market, or if that's different. So we come to the second type of order, which is a limit order. A limit order is what, what it sounds. You say, my limit is, I'm not going to pay any more than five bucks per share for that. And you put that into the order, and the broker says, fine, I, if I can find it at five bucks, I'll share a be or better, then I'll fulfill your order, and you'll get your shares. But if I can't, then I won't get the shares, because you're not prepared to pay as much as the market. And the same when selling shares, you can put in a limit order, we'll sell, and you'll say, I will sell these shares, but cost down or not, I want 650 for this. It may only be trading at 620 at the moment, but that's too little, and I want 650 So the broker will sit on your order, and if the time comes when he'll sell your shares for that price, he'll do so, and your order will be fulfilled. But with the limit order, there's never any guarantee it's going to be fulfilled. It's only, only be fulfilled if the broker can do it at the price you've specified. Next type of order is a stop order. And this is a very familiar one, familiar one to trade. It's usually used to stop at loss. You're putting in an order to sell the position you've just bought, and it goes the wrong way. So you've bought the shares at $5, thinking they're going to go up to 650 But your analysis of the chart says that they could drop to 450 And if they do, they could go through a support, so you better get out of it. Say you're put in a stop order at 450, you'll hope it doesn't trigger, you'll hope the price doesn't go down too much below 450, but you hope it goes up to 650 where you're aiming for. But that just to stop out the price dropping below 450, and you were still sitting on the shares, you would lose a whole lot more. It is important to know that the stop order is just an order to the broker to sell the shares on the market once the price is hit. So it becomes a market order once that price is hit. So you may not get 450, you may only get 440, but unless it's a wild market, you should get fairly close to the market price. You can combine the two things, stop limit order. This is simply a stop order that becomes a limit order when the price is hit. So instead of becoming a market order, when the price is hit, it may become a limit order and may say stop level at 450. But if it goes below 450, I'm going to hang on to them and pray. This is an order that may not get fulfilled because even if it hits the stop and if the price is moving so rapidly that the broker can't fulfill the limit order, and then you get the price that he is not able to fulfill that order. To, to you, run a risk by hanging on to the shares as the shares are going down, down and down, but you'll not get any less for them than you asked for, and of course it works the other way as well. The other type of order in which we commonly use is a trailing stop. I know you can't get that on some of the Forex software, but certainly you can put it in the market. Most brokers can have you put a trailing stop in. The trailing part is just as mean as a trail behind the price of the stock as the price goes up, hopefully. Trailing stop will stay a set distance away. A certain distance can be set in different ways. You can set a certain percentage, or you can set a certain monetary price as the dollar underneath the market price of the stock. As the stock will go up, the prices rise, but it latches, it never comes down. So in this way, to knock it most of the profits without even having to look at it, when the price goes up, this follows up behind, it goes up above, you bought it at, and eventually the price comes does come down in a retracement, for instance, and it will hit this stop loss. And the amount it is trailing, so therefore it will close to the peak price that you saw. There's some other types of orders explained in the module, but these are the ones that you're going to be hitting most of the time.
The other thing is the modifier. Apart from the market order, for every other order you can have a modifier that says it's out today only. I want the broker to fill this order if he can do it today. If if or you will cancel the order so you might apply that to your order and say that you can fulfill this today, fine, otherwise tomorrow I'm doing something different. So you do have the modifier on it. Now that covers money management, again your primary concern is to preserve your car, car, capital. Now we move on to computers. Computers are wonderful things, aren't they? But only at all. Pocket calculators were thought to be magic. A cipher was pretty good in its time, and understanding that an abacus is pretty good as well. Computers only at all. It's an elaborate tool, and we tend to trust it too much because it tells us too much and sometimes on the slimmest of evidence. So treat it with respect, and treat it simply as a tool. Now we use computers in trading extensively to analyze our trades. In the charts you've seen in the modules obviously have come straight off computers combining hundreds of thousands of prices and producing lines and pretty pictures. Now most of the computers you can find nowadays do that task adequately. You don't need any extra power for computing. They're all pretty good at it. So you can buy software, you can get free software, they particularly give it away to the traders who have a lot of forex accounts, and if you're going to buy software, I do suggest, suggest that you take advantage of the trials and see if you like the interface. There's always what comes down to nowadays, because software pretty much do the same thing, no matter which manufacturer you get it from. These days, one big thing in, is online charting software. You may go to stock charts or big charts, and that can give you the indicators, but you can't do extensive back testing or analysis. So that really is the only thing you're gaining is you you get the practice analysis and perhaps the ability to set everything up in the format you like. But if you test a couple of programs, you find the one that's intuitive to you, that then it's fine to buy that. But the software, but the software of course needs data to work on, and you can get data from various places. If you're going to do back testing, you'll probably download a heap of historical data from a database going back over 10 years, or whatever period you want to test. And depending on how live your trading is going to be, you may have to pay a service around 50 bucks a month to get all the numbers streamed down to your computer to do live trading or not. And that will be in addition to the software you get, and you have to make sure that the software and the data stream you're using are compatible to their standards. So that's the role of the computer. Now there's two ways to use them. One of them is you can set a computer running a look to look for certain things, like which shares have achieved the highest high in the last 52 weeks. And that's a fair bet that those shares might go up in an uptrend. So you can set a computer running to look for that. You can set computers running for all sorts of things, but you can use that as a single indicator. You can just take that as one of the factors, take your analysis of the chart and where your trend lines are as a f another factor and see how all those compare and just use the computer and whatever you're programming as a single indicator to get some confirmation and to make a trade. The other way to use a computer is to let, is to let it take the trade for all the new highs in the last 52 weeks. Let the computer make a trade, obviously setting conditions to the computer, like when it will do a stop loss and when it will take profit. And this is something you will backtest. It's not just for you to see and how to throw up money away. But it's a way to get trades. If it's a good trading plan that you've got programmed into the computer, then you'll find that you come out and profit over the whole. The advantage of using computers for that is that it makes unemotional trades. And for one of the disadvantages of being humans when you're a trader is that it's very hard to separate emotions. So if you get a computer to do the trades, it won't hesitate to say hit, stop, loss, got to sell. Whereas a person may wait. It won't hesitate to take a trade because you, may n you might not as you're not sure about that. If your program is in the con uh, if your if you program it as the conditions in the computer, it will take that. This is one way of doing it, as you can set things running and do the back test, and then trade as it works out. Generally, I'd advise using a computer only as a tool, and have a final say on when when the trades or if the trades happening or not. 
but we have to recognize when we're feeling emotional or doing, tra or doing the trade anyway so rather than just letting the computer run like a black box I usually say that you should see this and say yes whether or not you have that trade one thing you've got to realize when you're doing trading most of it has to do beyond why that is because you're looking at numbers online you're looking at the charts you're figuring out the trading so you have to keep that in mind about the computer and your computer can break down or your internet can break connection can break down you may want to get a second internet connection if only as an alternate dial-up arrangement you can get a free internet connection from Juno and you'll be able to dial up and get trading or you want to have a broker's phone number handy and bearing in mind that might be a computer failure it's probably best that if you don't just have your broker's number on your computer you should have it on paper somewhere you'll be able to call up your broker and say hey I want to close out because I don't know what's happening on my shares and I don't want to risk I'm going the wrong way if your computer fails so do make sure you've got some sort of standby system to get out of positions that might turn against you Moving on next to module 12, we're really getting down to the nitty gritty now. This module is about how to build a trading system. This is a determining factor you're going to look at and what indicators you're going to see and how you're going to deal with it in order to actually post the trades. So we're getting down to what we're staying, saying for which is building yourself a trading system and testing it and then going live and seeing how much money you can make. So, you will be in, so that's in the next module and I'll look forward to seeing you then.